on this topic, which is capital expenditure appraisal. Now, this is a topic on finance. Okay? So, in our in our module, okay, in our module, we have the first part is accounting. This topic is on finance, and then we have one on management accounting. So all, all three areas are there. So this is looking at finance. Okay? Have, have some of you done a, a, a finance module before? Okay. Okay, not worry. This this should not this should not be this should not pose a very good challenge. Okay, this this one uh, we should be able to go through uh, quite well. Okay. I think the first one was because we had some uh, issues in the basics. So this one we should not have too much of problem. Okay, this is a topic on finance. Let's try to to follow this area closely. Okay. Now, if we look at a finance module, okay, just before I go into this, I'll just spend one or two minutes uh, telling you a little bit about the finance module. Right. If if you do a finance module, there are going to be three areas. Okay. In a finance module, there are going to be three main areas, right? You, you still have your pure lectures, but you're going to be on three areas. The first area is what we call um, investing. Okay. Then we have another one which is on financing. Okay. And the third area in any finance module will be on the area of evidence. So you are going to look at these three areas, right? Quite similar to your cash flow statement, right? The first area where the first area where we are looking at investing, okay? Where we are looking at investing, right? this area in finance. This area in finance, we are very much interested in accepting or taking on projects. So this is an area where we are looking at project appraisal. Right? Project appraisal means should the company go on to take on this project, right? To decide whether they are going to take on this project, of course, we need to look at certain methods to evaluate. This is what our, our lecture tag is all about. Methods to evaluate projects. Okay? So here we are going to focus on the methods to look at project to decide whether you should accept a project or you should not accept a project. Okay? The second area in finance, now this is not in our syllabus, just to spend one or two minutes here. The second area in finance is about financing. Financing simply means the mix of the mix of finance that we want to use on financing this project. In other words, you are going to use debt and you are going to use equity. Okay? So what proportion of debt and what proportion of equity do you want to use in financing this project? Okay, again there are certain rules we need to follow and so on and so forth. But this is not in our syllabus, so we will just talk about it very, very quickly, right? There are certain rules we need to follow in the mix. The third area is dividends. The area of dividends is how much, how much to pay in cash dividends. 
So what are we referring to the third area here? The third area we are referring to when the company make a profit, they can do two things. Okay? When a company makes a profit, they have a choice of doing two things. One is to use the profit to pay out cash dividends. And the second thing they can do is what we call retention. Right? Retention means keep that profit back inside the company, save that profit back for future profits, for future projects. Okay? So this area here is what we also call, we have looked at this, this is what we call retained profits. Right? This is what we call retained profits. So retained profits means retention. When you make a profit, you don't give it out, but you keep it back for future projects. Okay? So first area, second area, the third area in finance. What we are interested in is investing project appraisal methods. The second area and the third area is not in our syllabus, so we will not talk too much about it. Okay? Right? Okay, we are just going to stick with the first part investing and project appraisal. Now, Okay, uh, one, of the, one of the areas we need to know here is the area of present values. Okay? When we do our project appraisal, when we do, when we want to find out whether the project is good, we always need to find our present values. Okay? Now what is a present value? Okay, this is what a present value here means. <coughs> Okay? 
And here we are assuming that the discount rate is, okay, the discount rate we want to use is 10%. Okay, 10%. So the future value is this amount of money, $1,000, divide by 1 plus 0 0.1. Okay, 0 0.1 is this 10% here. Okay, to the power of 5. Okay, to the power of 5. This 5 here is the number of years which is in this case 5 years. Okay, 5 years. Huh? Now, when we use our calculator to get this number here, okay, we will end up getting, okay, I'll just move on here. Huh? We will end up getting 1000 divided by 1.5. 6105 and this is equal to 620.93. Okay, this is equal to 620.93. Right? Now let me let me explain what this number means exactly. Okay. Now this means okay, this means that. If we look at it in another way, this means if you were to put in dollars 62093, okay, you take this money today, you deposit this money into, let's say, an insurance product, okay, assuming the insurance product will give you 10%, you leave it in the insurance product for five years without taking out the money. At the end of five years, when you reach this point in time, the insurance company will pay you $1,000. Okay, they will pay you $1,000 assuming they say we will give you a 10% return. Can we all follow? Right? This is what we mean here. Huh? Now, we will use this principle later on because we will, be, we will be finding future and present values in our cash flows. Okay? Right? So that's why we talk a little bit about this because we will need to use this later on. Now, I have also given to you tables, right? We will be using the tables later to find these values. Now, the first appraisal method Okay, the first project appraisal method that we have is called a payback method. Okay, the first method that we, we use in appraising projects is called a payback method. Okay? Now what is this payback method all about? In the payback method, okay, in the payback method, we are looking at the time, okay, we are looking at the time to recover, okay, the time to recover the initial investment okay the time to recover the initial investment based on annual cash flows okay based on annual cash flows coming from the project okay we will select the project with the shortest time. Okay, with the shortest time. If there are two projects, we take the shortest time. Sometimes the company management will also have a will also have a business acceptable payback. Sometimes we call this the hurdle payback. Okay, this one. Okay, now this business accept, acceptable payback payback is set 
by the management. Okay, this is set by the management. So the management will say that we want an acceptable payback. For example, they set an acceptable payback for projects. Uh, let's see. They set an acceptable project for payback at, let's say, they set it at, at five years. Okay? At five years. Which means that the company is not willing to consider any project where you calculate the, pro the payback more than five years. Okay? So anything below 5, yes, they will accept it. But anything above 5, they are not willing to accept this project. Okay, this is what the management has decided to set. And of course, this is very much based on the judgment. Okay, this is based on judgment. The management will just decide, this is a payback our company wants, and therefore we select this number for projects. Okay. Now, the, the payback is very often a good method for initial screening. Okay. For initial screening. So this is a good method to, to use to decide on the projects at the first step. Okay. Where you want to have a very quick answer very quickly, you will use this as a first screening level. Okay, just to tell you, yes, we should go on or not go on. Okay, so it is a very good method at initial screening level. Just at the first level, you decide yes or no, and then you need to use other methods to decide. Okay, right, so this is the payback method. Now, another method. Okay, which we have here, the second method, is the accounting rate of return method. Okay, the accounting rate of return method. Now, the accounting rate of return method As you see here, this method is similar to ROI, right? Return on investment. So this method is actually an accounting ratio, right? This is actually an accounting ratio, okay? The formula for this is average yearly profit Right? Average yearly profit divided by average investment. Times a hundred percent. Okay? Times this by a hundred percent. Now on the numerator here, average yearly mean we take the profit for a number of years. Okay? Let's say we are taking for five years. Okay, at the total profit, take the total profit and divide it by five years. Divide it by five. Right? If this is for five years, you will divide it by five to get the average profit. Okay. On here, which is the average investment. Okay, this average investment number. What we are doing is. We are taking the value of this at year 0 plus year 5. Take the value of this at year 0, okay, which is right at the beginning, and year 5 and divide it by 2 to give you the average number. Okay? Now, this average investment is likely going to be a capital cost, right? This is going to be a fixed asset. So, you take the value of the fixed asset at the beginning, okay? This is going to be the beginning. 
and this is going to be right at the end, right? Beginning, end, and divide by 2, right? To give you the average investment, right? And then we multiply by 100, so our answer is actually in a percentage, okay? Our final answer is in the form of a percentage. So if we look at this number, okay, this is a return on investment. So what is it trying to tell the management? It is very clearly telling the management the return on investment, right? The return on investment that the management will get. Right? The, return on manage, the return on investment that the management will get on an annual basis. Okay, on an annual basis. Right? Let's put a very simple number. Say this is 20%. Okay, this number is 20%. So it is now telling the management that this investment will bring a return of 20% on a yearly basis if the management decides to go on with this project. Right? To go on with this investment. Right? Okay. Now this investment can be, for example, this can be a machinery. Right? This can be a machinery, it can be a plant, Okay, which they are trying to decide whether we want to invest in this machinery or not. Okay. And all these yearly profit numbers will again be forecasted. So they are going to be forecast numbers that we are going to put on what the machine is going to bring in the next five years. Can we all follow this method? Okay, so this is very similar to your ROI or return on investment. Now the third method we have is called the net present value method. Okay, this is called the net present value method. So this is a third method of appraisal. Now, net present value method In short, we call it NPV Okay, NPV Now, what we do in this uh, What we do in this uh, net present value method Is we take Okay We take the total discounted okay the total discounted cash flows from this project okay from this investment we take the total discounted cash flows okay from the project minus the minus the initial investment or initial cost. Okay? This initial investment is what we are planning to spend on this machine. Okay? We are that we are looking at. So this is the initial investment we are planning to look at. This is the total discounted cash flows. So when we take the total of this number minus this number, this number here is then called net present value okay this is called net present value now there is an NPV rule right there is an NPV rule okay NPV rule means we must always apply this rule to this number here right 
the NPV rule says if the NPV number here is a positive number, right? A positive number means this is positive, then we will <coughs> we will accept the project. Right? We will accept a project. Accept a project means go on, take this project. Okay? If the NPV number, the net present value number, is a negative number. Okay? This number is negative. We will then reject. Right? We will then reject the project. Right? Reject simply means we will not take on this project because we will lose money in taking on this project. Okay? Right? Positive simply means any positive number. Let's say this number is 5,000. Okay? This means this is a positive NPV. Therefore, applying the rule, we will accept this project. Yes. How do we get the discounted cash flow? How do we get the discounted cash flow? Okay. To get the discounted cash flows, huh, this is what we need to do. Okay, this is what we need to do. First of all, okay, first of all here, what is going to happen is we will have to look at the, the life of this project. Okay, let's see the life of this project is five years. Huh? Okay, let's see the life of this project is five years. So life is five years. Okay. Now after after looking at the life of the project, we will then look at what are the cash flows this project is going to bring for the five years. Okay, we need to project that. Okay. So we are going to have year. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay? What is the cash flows this project is going to bring in over the five years? So this is going to be the cash inflows. Okay? This is going to be the cash inflows. Now, Assuming we just use very simple numbers, it is going to bring in over the five years, okay? It is going to bring in cash inflows of 3,000 every year. <coughs> it's going to bring in $3,000 on a yearly basis, okay? Now, this Cash flows have not been discounted. When we say discounted, we must bring it back to present values. Okay? So to do that, to bring it to present values, first of all, what we will also need here is a we will also need a discount rate. Right? At what rate? Are we going to discount these cash flows? Okay. Now this discount rate must usually be the company's cost of capital. Okay, it must usually be the company's cost of capital. Right? This is your average cost of raising finance in the company. Okay? So assuming this rate, okay, assuming this rate is 10%, we will discount the cash flows here at 10%. So this is going to be discount rate, right? Discounted rate at 10%. Okay? Now we need to get these numbers, huh? So we are going to go to our present value tables. Okay, I've given you present value tables. Okay, now go to the present value tables. 
okay, and look under ten percent, okay, look under ten percent, okay, under ten percent. Uh, for year one, we get zero point nine zero nine. So this number is zero point nine zero nine. For year two, the number is 0 0.826. So this number is 0 0.826. For year three, okay, for year three, this number is 0 0.751. 0 0.751. For year 4, this number is 0 0.683. 0 0.683. So 0 0.683. For year 5, this number is 0 0.621. Okay, 0 0.621. So 0 0.621. Okay, now, having put this, we are going to multiply this number by this number to give us the present value, okay, the present value of these numbers. We are now taking these numbers and bringing the numbers to year zero time, right, to year zero time. So, 3,000 times 0 0.909, okay, this will give us 2727. For year 2, we have 3,000 times 0 0.826, this will give us 2478, okay. For year 3, this is 3,000 times 0 0.751, which is 2253. So this is 2253. Year 4, 3,000 times 0 0.683, which is 2049. And for year 5, this is 3,000 times 0.621. 1863. Okay? Now, the total discounted cash flows. Okay? The total discounted cash flows. Can we add all these numbers here? Add all present value numbers. Okay? 2727 plus 2478 plus 2253 plus 2049 plus 1863 11370 11370 okay now, minus the initial investment, assuming the initial investment, which is the cost of this machine, is dollars ten thousand. Okay, this machine will cost us ten thousand dollars to buy. Total discounted cash flows minus the initial investment, it will give us dollars. 1370. Okay, dollars 1370. Now, if we apply the NPV rule, is this a positive number? Yes, this is a positive number. Therefore, according to the NPV rule, the company should accept this project. Yes, 
assets also the total of present value. Then if you have investment, the 10,000 is the value you came up with, right? It's not a complete one, right? This 10,000 value here, okay, this is assumed. Or this is being assumed. This is assumed, and what we mean here is that this is actually, you see, the company is now looking at this project, okay? This, they are looking at this project. This 10,000 is actually, it can be a machine cost, okay? This can be a machine cost that we are paying at the beginning, at the start of the project. Okay, so these values are all assumed. When I put down here, they are all assumed values. Okay, can we all follow? Any questions at this stage? Okay, so this is the third method. Now, in a short run, we will, we, will, we will try to do a comparison of the methods. Huh? Okay, now, the next method, which is called the internal rate of return. Okay, so this is method number four, which is called the internal rate of return. Now, internal rate of return, okay, in short, we call it IRR. Okay, the internal rate of return, okay, the internal rate of return is a discount rate, as we see here, at which the net present value is equal to zero. Okay? In other words, what we are trying to say here is if we take this internal rate of return and this internal rate of return becomes a discount rate, right? If we take this internal rate of return and we put it over here, right? We are going to end up getting a net present value which is zero. Which means, right, what we are trying to say here is that the total discounted, right, the total discounted cash flows minus initial investment is equal to zero. Right, in other words, the total discounted cash flows is also equal to your initial investment. Right? That is where we use the internal rate of return as a discount rate. Okay? Now, to be able to calculate this internal rate of return, right? In order to get this internal rate of return, as we see here, we will need to do two NPV calculations, okay? Now, we will need to do two NPV calculations, one positive and one negative, okay? So, this is a formula here, right? Internal rate of return is equal to LDR, LDR stands for lower discount rate, Right? Lower discount rate. Now LDR plus positive NPV divide by positive NPV minus negative NPV. Okay, right? times HDR minus LDR. Okay? Now HDR stands for the higher discount rate. Right? Higher discount rate. Okay? 
right? So what we will do is this. Huh? We will do a NPV calculation two times. Okay, we need to do a NPV calculation two times. The first time we get a positive NPV. Okay. The second time when we do another NPV calculation, we must get a negative NPV number. Okay, a negative NPV number. Then we take those numbers and we put it into this formula to come up with this internal rate of return. Okay? Now LDR is this number here, right? Lower discount rate. Lower discount rate means a smaller discount rate. This is HDR. HDR means the bigger discount rate. Say if we use 10 and 20% in the calculation, assuming then this becomes 10 and this becomes 20. Okay, assuming we use 10 and 20 in calculating two and three numbers. Yes. So this is only happens in that during the whole Project life, right? Maybe five years. It is not a consistent discount rate, right? Uh, this, this discount rate, okay? This, this is a discount rate that we want to calculate this discount rate at the beginning. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that that means for the whole project, right? The discount rate within like the five years yes. is very easy. It's not consistent. That's why that big. Uh, high value and low value discount rate. Is that the reason why there's a high goal? No, 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 no. The the reason for having the reason for having this high and low is related to getting these two NPV numbers. Okay? Now let's let's first of all focus on this formula. Okay? This formula this is a formula, first of all, right? The formula requires a positive NPV number and one negative NPV number, right? So what we will normally do, okay, when we, when, before we come to this step, okay, before we come to this step, this is what the company will do, right? okay? The company will first do a NPV calculation. So first step, they will calculate. They will calculate the NPV. This is the first NPV calculation that they do, right? When they use, when they do this first NPV calculation, assuming that the company ends up with a positive with a positive NPV, okay? The first calculation that they do. Now, according to the formula, what must they do the second time? They must get another negative number, right? So, repeat the NPV calculation one more time. Calculate NPV the second time. This time, to get a negative NPV so that we have these two values which can be put into this formula here. Second time here, we we are trying now to 
get a negative entry. That's our aim. We are trying to get a negative. So when we do another calculation here, we will use a discount rate which is higher, so we can try with 15%. Okay? With a higher discount rate, you are likely going to end up with a negative net present. So, um, so to my first question, if there's a negative net present, investment period, yes. the discounted rate, it only happens when there's this uh, NPV equals to zero, when I need to get a positive and negative, it only happens when the discount rate varies within that period. That means it's not consistent for five years, it's the same 5%, 5%, like first year 5%, second year 8%, third year, uh, even if it's 12%, I, yeah, and it varies with the discount Okay, are you trying to say we must do a IRR when the discount rate varies? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, is that the reason? That's why there's a positive and negative. The the reason for doing a positive and, and negative calculation is simply required by the formula. Okay, this is required by the formula, right? The formula wants me to do a positive and negative calculation, right? So I have to do a NPV calculation twice so that I get a positive and negative NPV numbers that I can put inside the formula here, right? Now, otherwise, as a company, what would we what would we want to do? Would we want to have a negative NPV? No, right? Because negative NPV means we, we have to reject the project, right? We have to reject the project. Yes. Then for the discount rate, the higher discount rate is that means that the more chances we have to obtain a negative So to what extent, how high the discount rate? How do we decide the uh, next discount rate? Okay. What we do normally, okay, as a very, very simple rule, we will take the first discount rate, Okay, we take the first discount rate, and as you see here, what I did is I took 5 plus 10 to give me 15. Right? We'll take 5 plus 10, a very general rule. This is what we do, right? So the first one gives you a positive. You take that first one, you plus another 10, so that your next discount rate becomes 10% higher. Okay, so you will use 15% now and discount your cash flow using that 15%. Can we follow? Yeah. Yes. So if for example when we tweak the discount rate, right, at any one time even 1% more, 11% is already a negative. You can take that 11% instead of carrying on with the 15%. Uh, okay, you are trying to say the first one you did was 11, is it? And yeah. you got Let's say the first one we did was 10. Yes. Then it's positive 137. Then we do one more at 11. Okay. And it's negative. Okay. If, if you got one at 10 and you got one at 11, which is negative, yes, combine the two in the formula to to give you an IRR. So that's good enough a difference. Yes. Or the difference is too minute to no, make no. it. No, that is, that is good as enough. As long as it's satisfying negative and yes. positive. Yes, one positive, one negative. What we want, what the formula exactly wants, uh, if you look at it, the formula wants to sort of interpolate the two. We want to get something between these two numbers to give us a rate that we put into the NPV and to understand this carefully, the internal rate of return is a break-even discount rate. Once we put into the NPV, we get NPV. That's what it is. Okay, any other questions here? Okay, so this is the this is the fourth method. Okay, we will look at the calculations in a short while. Okay, so we get to see all the numbers. We will look at the calculations in a short while.